So in lieu of taking apart the whole car, either at the headlight switch or at the headlights, I just simply pulled the headlight relay and I determined where my control side is by looking for continuity. And we see we have continuity there. So now I know looking in the socket where my control side and where my load side is. I then went to my load side, determine which is the power and which is the ground side. And I went ahead and applied 12 volts directly to the ground side and confirmed the headlights do work. In less than two minutes, I told him he did not need new headlights after all. And I sent him back to the store to return them while I go and fix what the real problem is. Then knowing that the headlight switch must activate the control side of the relay, I went ahead and inserted my voltmeter to look for voltage. And of course, with the headlight switch off, there would be no voltage. Otherwise, of course, the headlights would always be on. So then I went and I turned on my headlight switch. And with the headlight switch, you can easily see on this car, we get 12 volts. However, that did not happen on the other car. Therefore, I immediately had a sense of direction that either the switch was bad or there was some lack of continuity. So to determine if there was a lack of continuity, I wanted to make sure that we had power. So to determine if there was power, I simply removed my probe and put it to a ground. There is no power. So in order to determine if there was a ground, I went ahead and I moved over to my ground side, went to continuity, and when I touch the ground, I can see there is continuity on the ground. So here's what I was able to determine because remember the whole time that I'm doing all of this electrical testing, I'm thinking in my mind of mapping out this circuit. So starting at our relay, I know that we have a direct shot to ground. I know that because in the terminal for the relay, there was continuity between the relay terminal at ground and ground. So I know that there is a direct shot to ground. We also know that there is going to be, of course, power on this side. And because there's a direct shot to ground, the headlight switch has to be the opposite of a horn in this case. The headlight switch has to be here. This would be the headlight switch. Now, we also know that we have a switch here and that we know that the headlights are going to be on this ground side. We know that because when I put 12 volts to the ground side, we got the lights to light up. We also know that this switch here is operating okay because I measured 12 volts at this end. I don't know if I showed that actually on this car, but of course I did it when I was doing the actual diagnosis on, on the real car. So I know I've got 12 volts to the switch. I know I can test the relay and the relay works. So the bottom line is I know that the lighting circuit is good. I am not worried at all about anything with the lighting circuit. The only possibility that we have that we have not eliminated is somewhere with the power side control. There are only two possibilities. Either we have some type of open either before or after the switch or the switch itself is bad. So let's take a closer look at that. So with my minimal electrical abilities and without even getting under the dashboard or removing a bolt or anything, just by going through these relays, I have determined that we have one of three possible problems here. We either have a bad switch or we have an open in the power either before or after the switch. And I believe that actually here would be your fuse. 
So how am I gonna determine with 100% certainty that we need a switch? And remember, I wanna act fast because the guy is still at this time on his way to the parts store. If I can diagnose that we need a switch, I can save him a trip. So the first thing that I did was I found that I took off some panels and accessed the back of the light switch where I could feel the wiring. And what I did was I went ahead and I put 12 volts directly from the fuse towards the switch. And I was able at the switch to measure 12 volts. That eliminates this as a problem. I know the integrity from the fuse on down is good. Notice uh, also, by the way, the fuse was not blown, so I'm not worried about a short or anything like that. I also know that I have 12 volts from the fuse to the battery, so I am not worried about this. That either leaves a bad switch or an open here. So by putting 12 volts directly here and activating the control side of the relay and operating the lights, I know that the integrity of this wiring is not an issue. That we can rule out. The only possibility left is this headlight switch does not work. So I asked him to buy a headlight switch when he returns his headlights at the parts store and told him that would fix it. And of course it did. So the idea here is not only of course to show you the basic operation of the relays and things like that, but also to give you some alternative testing methods. You can clearly see how having a basic understanding of the operation of a relay with no wiring diagram, with pretty much just a voltmeter, I was able to determine that problem without dissecting a whole bunch of the car. So. Um, I just want to close with one other thing, and that is I want you to keep in mind that we've been talking about very basic relay design here, where you're going to have your control and then a switch that would be pulled up by the control, of course, and actually these can be um, this positive and this ground can, of course, be reversed on either side of the relay. But one of the things I want you to keep in mind is you can have different variations of this part of the relay. So keep in mind, it is entirely possible that you could have this relay where it defaults to a closed position, but then sending your current through the control side will now cause the switch to pull up and open. So you could have, um, I don't know of any applications exactly, but it is of course possible, you could have a default closed position unless the relay is energized. Keep that in mind. It is also possible and actually quite common in many applications to have this here where you have the relay when it is in the open position, it is actually closed to another circuit. But then when you put your 12 volts here and you pull that switch up, it now closes off from that circuit and sends power down this circuit. That is a very common thing that you will see. And obviously you would have another peg, another terminal, on that relay and of course in the socket. So not every relay when you pull out is gonna have a nice easy four terminals. Some of them will have five. And this is because the relay is controlling two different circuits depending on whether it's energized or not. So I just wanted you to be aware of some of those variations that you may run into, but it's still basically the same operation. You're still gonna have a control side and this one you would just have two different continuities to test to make sure that the relay is working with both switches. All right, well that concludes this next segment in the diagnosis and understanding series. So in the future, if I run into a car where I'm gonna to have to do relay testing, we're just gonna do the relay testing and I will refer to this video as background training for people not familiar with it. So we keep the flow of the repair sequence going. But uh, hopefully you found this helpful. I encourage you to go ahead and try some of this stuff on your own car. I think you'll be just fine with it. And it really is a very helpful thing to know 
and can greatly expedite your troubleshooting process with electrical. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.